Hello, everyone. So exciting to have you all here with us today for this special premiere event. You're going to be among the first people who are going to see Global Skin's new documentary, Skin, Our Barrier to the World. My name is Jennifer Austin, and I'm the Chief Executive Officer of Global Skin, the International Alliance of Dermatology Patient Organizations. And I'll just share a little bit about who we are first before we get into our program. Global Skin is an alliance of over 190 patient organizations in 65 countries, representing more than 55 disease areas in dermatology. And the vision for our organization and the members that we work with all around the world is to create a world where people with dermatological conditions are healthy and fulfilled. And this certainly includes people who are living with atopic eczema. And our organization exists for a few key reasons. First is to elevate the voice of the global dermatology patient community. And many of those patient community members are on uh, this important uh, event today. And so welcome to you all and to welcome to all the people who support and the work that we do. Uh, we also exist to champion the common interests of people affected by dermatological conditions globally. And we unite global dermatology stakeholders to bring about transformative change for patients. And uh, to have that type of transformative change happen that we're all seeking, it's important that the patient voice be heard and understood. And our organization plays an active role in empowering our member organizations all around the world to do this at their national level, while Global Skin speaks as a collective voice at a global level. One of the key initiatives that's allowed us to pursue this is World Atopic Eczema Day, which we co-founded uh, in five years ago, actually, uh, with the European Federation of Allergy and Airways Diseases in 2017. And as I mentioned, this is our fifth anniversary. So to uh, recognize that and celebrate that, we are here today to watch a very special film. And we are thankful to our uh, supporting partner, Abvi the filmmakers uh, at With Principles and our community members who recognize the need to work together globally to ensure that atopic eczema receives the healthcare prioritization that it really and truly deserves. So it's my pleasure to introduce to you my colleague, Stephanie Miller, Global Skin's Communities Manager, and she will be the moderator for today's uh, event and she will introduce the film. Over to you, Stephanie. Thank you very much, Jennifer, and uh, welcome to everyone today, um, our members, our partners, and beyond. I really appreciate everybody uh, coming there and uh, seeing this film for the very first time. Uh, Global Skin is really proud to have worked with patient organizations in each of the six World Health Organization regions to produce this documentary on one of the most common dermatological conditions in the world. In this documentary, we focus in on atopic eczema and its significant burden on patients, caregivers, and their families. You, today, you'll hear from Phoebe in Hong Kong, China, Martina in Slovenia, Arsen and his mother, Rachel, in Kenya, Natalia in the United States, Hamina in Colombia, and Reese in New Zealand. As you watch this video today, I encourage you to keep in mind that atopic eczema is one of the most prevalent skin diseases in the world, but also one of the most under-recognized. According to the WHO Global Burden of Disease Initiative, more than 230 million people globally are affected with atopic eczema, and the numbers are continuing to rise. Atopic eczema has until recently been classified as a Western disease, one that is only pervasive in countries with higher incomes and Western lifestyles. However, various studies conducted over the past 10 to 20 years have shown that the rates of atopic eczema are just as prevalent in low and middle income countries. The results have also shown that this slow to shift bias against low to middle income countries has detrimental effects. Too many patients and caregivers do not have access to basic services at the primary care level and with specialists, and they often have to pay out of pocket for basic treatment. Living with atopic eczema truly is a global concern. Please stay with us after this viewing for a panel conversation with some of the speakers in the film and the filmmakers behind the scenes. For now, please make yourself comfortable, turn up your volume, and enjoy the film. This is Skin, Our Barrier to the World.
Um, they say you can't remember pain. I imagine this happens to everybody most of the time. When you go in for a swim in the ocean, you come out and it's a bit stingy. But if I go in there and I'm a bit flared, um, I come out of the ocean and it can be like razor blade cuts. Julia, my name is Martina. My name is Jimena Pinzon. I live in Utah of the United States. I developed eczema when I was six years old, and as I got older, it progressively got worse. This is um, one of my worst days. It was when I woke up and my skin was really dry on my face, and it was so dry that like I couldn't even like open my mouth or like blink, and it was very painful. Eczema is uh, definitely a debilitating condition. You have to go down. In the direction of the hair. Otherwise they form puslets. When早起身的时候,我的眼睛会很大,手脚是伸不直的。<laughs> 甚至乎连手指关节都会会渗水渗血的我家姐其实她那边的那个骨头是蛮大的我家姐她那边的那个骨头是蛮大的我家姐她那边的那个骨头是蛮大的我家姐她那边的那个骨头是蛮大的我家
you have thoughts like I don't fit in or people are staring at my skin or sometimes you just like even I was at a point where I was like I don't even want to be here anymore yeah you're so it, it wears thin you know and they're the times where you would like to just lie down and and not feel anymore el ser humano es una conexión no es mente cuerpo y mente si mi cuerpo no funciona mi mente pues tampoco eczema isn't just a rash on our skin it's not just a little itch on our back it's it affects everything one of the biggest things for me was my dog bandit he always knew when i was having a hard time with my skin yes and he would always come and sit by me and try to make me feel better. Access to medications for eczema is a major issue. The government here in New Zealand um, still aren't making these drugs available and subsidised for people to buy one injection. It will cost me $615 a week. It is a chronic illness that needs to be treated as such. And when it is on that category, it is, it's going to be easier to access medication, to access, uh, even if not free, but affordable, affordable treatment. We don't realize that our skin is our barrier to this world. You know, you just take it for granted, really. But it is, it, it stops everything. I suffer from atopic eczema and I need your help. My skin itches, my skin swells. My skin, <coughs> my skin hurts, my skin bleeds. At times my skin has made my life unbearable. Estoy cansado de que cansada de que me traten como si esto fuera una enfermedad contagiosa. And I'm tired of feeling isolated and alone. I'm tired of being asked why I'm not in school. I'm tired of being strong. And sometimes I'm tired of being alive. Our lives can be better, you can make it better. So I to If there are treatments, make it possible for people to access them. If support systems are in place, make it so people can actually use them. Make it so people can get the care they need. Do something right now, you have the power to change our lives. Thank you all for watching this film with us. Um, I've had the benefit, this, the, the privilege to have seen this video numerous times and I, I still feel quite emotional and moved uh, by these stories every time I watch it. Um, so I again want to thank you, uh, Rachel and Arsene, Natalia, Reese, Phoebe, 
Hamina and Martina for all of you having the strength and the courage to share your story so openly so that we can all understand this burden of atopic eczema. Um, today, we do uh, have a very exciting panel of conversation about to happen. Um, we have some of the uh, speakers from in the film and we have some of the filmmakers with us today. Um, I would like to introduce the panelists now. We have with us uh, Rachel Ogola, that's the mother of our sin and the founder of the Eczema Society of Kenya. We have Natalia Chiarenza, who is also in the film, a student from Utah, USA. We have Cheryl Talent, the president of Eczema Aust Association of Australasia Incorporated. She is a board member and also provides support to Reese, who we saw in the film. We have Andy Keane, our two-time Juno award-winning director. And finally, we have Paul Bonsell. He's the creative director from Principles. This is the Toronto-based marketing firm who helped us bring all these people together for this project. So welcome everybody and thank you for joining. Great to be here. Um, I hope um, that everyone uh, has had a moment to, to gather yourselves after, right. after watching this uh, film again, because it is, it is quite an emotional viewing. Um, I do, uh, I will mention to the audience that uh, after this conversation, we will have some time for some questions from the audience. So as you have your, as you think of your questions, I encourage you to submit them in the uh, Q&A box that you can find in the Zoom meeting. Um, so, all right, so let's get right into it. Uh, this first question is, is for all of our panelists today. Um, when, uh, what uh, motivated you to, to take part in this documentary when myself uh, and the Global Skin team uh, first approached you and to try to explain this, this project um, in a very vague way at the beginning? And then all of you helped us make something come together in the end. So I'd love to hear your, your key motivation to why you said yes to, to joining us in this. Um, I'm gonna start with you, Natalia, please. Um, part of my wanting to be in this documentary had to do with the fact that eczema is something that not a lot of people know about. And this was a great way to show the world what we're going through, because like we said in the film, it's just something that looks like it's so little, but it's actually, it's a disability. It keeps us from doing the things that we want to do. So this documentary was great to be a part of because I was able to help the world see what we're going through and help us be able to express that. Thank you, Natalia. Um, Cheryl, how about you? Thanks, Stephanie. I, the movie was so moving. And um, part of my role as a patient advocate is not only to support eczema sufferers, but also to help generate change in order to benefit their health and well-being, If new treatments are not accessible or are too expensive, it's detrimental to the successful management of their skin condition, and we desperately need to change this. My involvement in this project was mainly to help highlight this problem and assist in the means of trying to bring about the changes that are needed. And in this process, emphasize the importance of making new treatments more accessible for everyone who suffers from this terrible skin disease, including myself, <clears throat> excuse me. Globally, more and targeted government assistance is really needed to make <clears throat> every treatment available to all those sufferers who really need them. There are still comparatively very limited treatments available for eczema sufferers, but we really need to be able to access those ones that are effective more easily and more affordably. Thank you. Thank you, Cheryl. I appreciate that. Um, and, uh, and to you, Paul. Um, thanks. Yeah, I mean, one of the early motivations for me when uh, you know we started talking about this was the creative challenge. Um, to make a film like this, we, we were tasked with capturing an international story with people from around the world during a global pandemic with uh, a limited budget. So 
um, y- y- you know, it, it, it felt like quite a creative challenge. And somehow it also felt like it was very rich with, with opportunity. You know, how can we capture something that will compel audience? How can we educate but still create a very emotional story? How can we bring everyone together in a film from, you know, a single location? Um, and, and the short answer uh, very quickly became uh, the people um, and, and the people that were involved, the characters of, of the film, the intimacy of their storytelling and the extremely personal accounts that um, they put out there uh, for us. Um, early moment or early on in the in 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 the process, there was uh, you know there was um, a video that was submitted. One of the initial submissions was was Martina, and uh, you know Andy and I both got the submissions at the same time. Uh, we jumped on a call right away uh, with each other, and, and we were like, "This is going to work. Uh, this this is going to uh, be a, a compelling film if it's Martina alone." Uh, it it is going to work, and uh, as time uh, you know, in the process unfolded, uh, we met more people, um, and we met everybody, and uh, um, started to realize that we we had something very special here, um, and uh, the the format of the film, which um, was really forced by all those creative challenges uh, uh, that I uh, laid out, um, really felt personal. Um, and really felt connected to people uh, in their homes in an intimate way and, and uh, came together, um, I, I think, uh, very, very well. Thank you, Paul. I have to agree, uh, having worked with you on the casting, that uh, as we were getting to hear these stories and hear all these uh, overlaps, but also unique stories, um, <laughs> that we knew that there was going to be a lot to share um, and yeah. this was, this was going to turn into something. Um, Rachel, the same question to you. What, what motivated you to say yes, you and Arsene, to this, to this project? Yeah, um, given the challenges that people, I've seen people go through within my vicinity, and I think all over the world, interacting with people all over the world, um, here and there through Global Skin, I, most, of us, most of the stories are the same. And um, especially for me now, the challenge I've had with Arsene and my children for Asen was more intense than for the for the sister. You know, the challenges are almost the same and the struggle is the same. And this struggle is not a joke, it's quite a journey. It's a journey that needs inspiration, it needs courage, and needs someone to look up to. So for me, this was like giving back to society. And I really thank the makers of this film because they have no idea what this film will do. You know, the impact of this film is gonna be intense. Thank you, Rachel. Um, and Andy, finally to you, what motivated you to, to, motivated you to say yes? Uh, thanks, Stephanie. I think, yeah, I mean, it was, I think with, with any project uh, that I come to or I, I'm invited to the table to speak about and think about, it usually begins with, um, you know, are there stories that are you know, relatable to a lot of people and, um, you know, is there truth uh, to be told? Um, and so, I, I mean, I mean, I, I'm going to mention the same moment that Paul did was when we reached out to the community with Global Skin's help, of course, and we met, we, we started to see some of these videos. The first one, I mean, it really just said, yes, th- that is here uh these are i mean there was there was the light went on for me i didn't know a lot about uh atopic eczema and uh realizing that there's people out there who are going to be very open with their experience uh, and made me think wow if we can get a few of these people on camera then we've got a real important project ahead of us so yeah it was yeah and it was just once we said go, it was super exciting and, um, and a big education. Thank you, Andy, I appreciate that. Um, this next question is, is just for the filmmakers actually. So we'll build a little bit on that idea. Um, so did you learn anything new about atopic eczema? I'm hoping that you did. And uh, I'm just wondering how much understanding you had about atopic eczema before you took this project on. 
Um, how about we start with you, Paul? Okay, great. Um, well, a little over 20 years ago, I, I used to live in Dublin and I had a, a roommate who had uh, eczema. Um, interestingly, it, you know, we lived together for over a year. Um, interestingly, he played it off as, as, as though it wasn't serious at all, which I think is a, a lot of people's experience who, who don't have it, you know, really, really uh, intimately or, or close uh, to their lives. Um, and, you know, that was sort of my foundation of, of my understanding of atopic eczema. Um, and, you know, out of ignorance, I just really had no idea of the implications living with something like this could, could be, um, especially the social, uh, the mental, the economic effects that it has on, on people's lives. And, um, you know, going through this, uh, process and, and, uh, meeting people who could tell their stories so articulately, it, it really, you know, um, uh, uh, shone a light on, on how tragic it, it can be. You know, Natalia says in, in, in the film, it's not just a rash and, uh, for the most part, that's what I understood it to be. Um, and uh, this, you know, this project uh, has it has educated me um, a lot in 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 how this affects people in in, in much more uh, severe ways. And uh, again, not just the physical implications, but uh, it's so much more broadly than that. Um, so I learned everything I now know about uh, atopic eczema uh, through this process. Thank you, Paul. And you, Andy. Yeah, I didn't know too much about it at all. I, I realized quickly. Um, I certainly was aware of it as a skin condition. Um, but uh, it was, you know, I quickly learned about its effects, both physical and mental and uh, psychologically. And, and this is obviously, you know, again, it goes back to, it adds to the motivation for wanting to make something memorable. And um, everyone had their own stories and I learned different things from, from everyone. Um, I think going into it, this helps, you know, in a way, um, uh, not knowing too much about it. I was really curious to get to know uh, these the participants in the film and, and hear their stories and ask questions that perhaps are quite simple to them, but for me, uh, and, and perhaps a lot of the viewers, um, things that we didn't know. And so it was a bit of a journey of discovery. And in the end, um, I, I think we checked the boxes on, on these real important aspects of a condition that affects people all over the world. Great, thank you, Andy. Um, this next question is for, for the other half, for the, uh, the patients and uh, the patient leaders. Um, now that you've seen this documentary, we, we see what's been captured and what's been shared. Um, is there any challenge or concern about atopic eczema that you really, really want to emphasize? Any points made in this um, documentary that you really want people to walk away from this event remembering? Um, Rachel, let's start with you first. Came out in the video. They were brought out in the video, like, uh, of course, the issue of stigma, the struggles, the affordability, and uh, also eczema being um, a critical illness. So um, I think um, the film has brought out the most important aspects um, that affect people all over the world. So I don't think uh, there's anything I would really want to emphasize more because I think everything, basically everything has been captured, everything that I can relate with, and I think most people will relate with. And um, I think it's going to be very easy for policymakers to pick out the issues here. Yeah, so I, I don't think there's uh, really any issue that I want to overemphasize on or to put more emphasis on. Thanks, Rachel. Mm -hmm. Um, Cheryl, I ask you the same question, and I know you're able to speak both as a, as a patient and as a patient leader and a friend of Reese. So um, is there anything that you would really like people to, to walk away from? Well, as I said before, I found it very moving. 
to see such emotion by the eczema sufferers who um, participated in the documentary. Even though I speak to um, eczema sufferers about their skin on a daily basis, to me it really highlights the terrible mental and emotional conflict on both the sufferer and their families or their carers that this dreadful skin disease inflicts and the absolute powerlessness that sufferers feel when trying to manage their skin condition without access to the latest treatments. To know that help is available but not accessible makes everyone who's trying to contribute to their management success and help them live a better life um, feel really helpless. And, um, you know, that's a really sad thing to see. For the future, we really need to try and implement a template plan which can be used globally to help patient advocates successfully appeal to their local government when applying for funding, for subsidising a new treatment, having up-to-date statistics also on a global scale would also be very extremely helpful for organisations uh, around the world to use for their own ad sorry, advocacy efforts. Sorry, guys, I've got a bit of a cold tonight. <laughs> Thank you, Cheryl. I appreciate it. Um, and Natalia, finally to you. Um, what do you want people to walk away remembering after watching this film? Um, excuse me also, perks of going back to school. <clears throat> I really wanted people to understand that eczema is a lot bigger than it seems. And a lot of things that were <clears throat> excuse me, hard for me was when um, people didn't understand that. And the other thing is that eczema, for some people, you can grow out of it. But for a lot of people, they end up having it the rest of their lives. And sometimes it gets worse. So it can be really hard to keep going when you know that this might never go away. So that was always hard. And basically, just to always remember that when someone says they have eczema or you hear that someone is struggling with their eczema, maybe have a little more sympathy for them. It's a lot bigger than it seems. And um, doing a lot of research can educate you a lot too. Thank you, Natalia. Appreciate that. Uh, we have one final prepared question for the, the panelists here. Um, if there's anyone watching in the audience who would like to ask a question of, of a specific um, panelist or to everybody, please put it in the Q and A. My final question to you all is, now that we've worked together to create this amazing film, uh, what impact do you hope this documentary will have on policymakers who watch it? Um, Cheryl, let's start with you. Well, my hope for the future is that all policymakers will enact the changes that really need to be put into place to make new treatments very easily accessible and affordable by all eczema sufferers worldwide. There really needs to be stronger guidelines adopted by all health authorities on a global basis to ensure that a new treatment is presented and used quickly in each country. And this can involve many aspects, education of health providers, rapid completion of relevant paperwork and government assistance towards getting new treatments subsidized. The role of the patient support group is really vital in providing uh, education for sufferers and the general public about their disease keeping sufferers and their carers informed so that they are confident in finding the help they need when required. And this needs to be ongoing and updated constantly. Also, patient support groups working with policymakers to ensure that the unmet, need, sorry, unmet, unmet needs of eczema sufferers is highlighted is really essential if change is to be enacted. So that's my hope for the future. Thank you, Cheryl. Um, let's move to you, Paul. What, what do you hope the, the policymakers do? What do you hope this impact is with this film? One of the most, I guess, exciting parts uh, of this for me was the truly international uh, scale of, of this project. Um, so, you know, I, I, I really hope this film can reach uh, areas of the world where people are the least supported uh, with this. And I truly hope that um, policymakers will start to understand the severity 
of this um, and and act on on the needs of of their communities. Thank you, Paul. Um, Natalia, what about you? Um. Uh, sorry. Basically, I'm just hoping that, uh, especially for people who don't have access to treatments, they're able to get those treatments because um, a lot of people who do have the treatments are doing a lot better and they're able to do things that they couldn't do before. So people who don't have access to those treatments, um, if they could be given access in some sort of way and be able to live their lives a little more fully, that would be great for them. And honestly, just... To remember it's a lot bigger than it is. Of course. Thank you, Natalia. Um, Andy, the same question to you. Uh, well, yeah, from the very, from the outset of this project, I think uh, the a big part of the messaging for us and I think for Global Skin was in fact to, you know, turn on the light and turn up the volume on this issue globally. And, uh, and so I think by making this film and as a tool, I really don't know that there's a stronger tool than having, you know, the people tell, you know, tell these real stories and communicate them in a way that is heartfelt. And uh, there are no, you know, there are no barriers around their stories, it, it seems. Um, obviously, I mean, I would love, I would love that it's always great to get feedback on projects like these. And if there was ever a time where policymakers would join the conversation and say that once they had seen this piece, that perhaps, you know, let us know that, hey, this is going to make a difference. Because I think most importantly, um, it's the, it's the, it is the, 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 the global picture. Right? I mean, it, uh, and I really hope that it, it makes a difference for access and, and, and costs and availability for everyone. Thank you, Andy. Um, Rachel, let's let's finish that question with you. Um, what do you hope? What's the impact you hope for with policymakers? Thank you, Stephanie. Now, um, like uh, here in Kenya, chronic conditions like uh, renal diseases and diabetes are tax waived. The medication is waived of tax. So, I'd like to see eczema also placed in that kind of uh, group where the treatment, is, the, the treatment is made affordable by waiving taxation because most of the creams and emollients are thoroughly expensive for a common person to afford. So that is the one thing I would like. And then also I'd like uh, all governments worldwide, policymakers worldwide, look at the issue of insurance. Most of our national insurances do not cover eczema treatments. So it makes it impossible or not not being able to afford the treatment, you know, because you're looking at the treatment from the doctor, you're looking at the medication itself. So if it's not covered, then what and why, you know? So that is the one thing that I really pray that the policymakers will see in this. And then also um, more support for organizations uh, dealing with eczema, um, more funding, uh, more support in, in terms of research, in, term, in terms of information, in terms of material. Um, also, I would like to see, um, I hope that um, uh, there's, going, there's going to be more social psychosocial support and through, pol through policy and through guideline and policy in such a way that people with eczema, even in workplaces, in employment, in schools, institutions are supported mentally in terms of their mental health. And then uh, probably there's even a card given to them that this is, uh, you know, like they're exempted from certain, um, you know, they're given certain preferences. I, I, there's a word I'm looking for, I can't find it. Yeah. And then also uh, I'm hoping to see a stigma-free society where um, patients are, mm. you know, they can interact freely in schools, institutions, at workplaces, in the community, you know, through some kind of guideline by policymakers, some policy, you know, and I, of course, and then I want to reiterate the issue of uh, research, 
especially this side of my my of the world <laughs> there's very little or no research completely on eczema and other skin diseases or let me say dry skin or all skin diseases there's very little or no research at all so that's one thing i really want policymakers to look at this with favorable eyes thank you thank you rachel rachel you really bring up the the, the fact that it's just it's such a complex um such a complex uh burden to live with that and there's so much work that still needs to be done it's not even just in one area we need uh, care that works. We need access to the care. We need mental health supports. We need everything to be affordable. There's so many places where we do need things to get better that I feel like this should move the needle in some places. There's no real excuse for us to, to not have any movement forward when there are so many different areas we can work on. Uh, myself, just uh, as a, I was very um, attached to this project myself uh, on the back end and, and getting to talk with all of the, uh, the speakers in the film and getting to work with the filmmakers. And um, I've been quite uh, motivated throughout this project. Uh, I feel often as, um, as advocates, uh, we speak a lot about data and we talk about quantitative data in order to, to convince, um, convince policymakers, researchers to get involved. But I also believe we need this qualitative heartfelt peace, because when we can make somebody care about what we're talking about, then they're going to pay attention to all the numbers we bring to the table to support that feeling. Um, I really hope that this, this film, this documentary can be used by our members and beyond to really um, bring in that, that heartfelt piece of why this is important to everybody. So I want to thank you all uh, for, for sharing all of these, these uh, thoughts with us today. We do have just a couple uh, questions from the audience. We have a, a little bit more time. Um, the first one is for, for Natalia. Um, you are the, the sole uh, youth on the panel and I, I do appreciate you, you joining us with, uh, with your perspective. Um, do you have any advice for other youth who are dealing with eczema that maybe, maybe it's a little different dealing with it than as an adult? Uh, yes, a few things, definitely. Um, First off, I'd start by saying that I have, I made a TikTok a while ago and I started posting about my skin on there and it, I never realized how much it touched other people. I've had so many comments come through of, oh my gosh, I can't believe I found somebody who's going through the same thing. And it's easier for them to relate when they see that they know that they're not alone. So what my number one thing would be to not hide it. I want you to go out there and I want you to express how you feel. I want you to show others that you are suffering, but even though you're suffering, you're still having a good life or you're still trying to, because even though I've had a really hard life, I'm still trying and I've been able to have so much more confidence when I've shown people that it's okay to feel what you feel. It's okay to have bruises and like the pigmentation, it's gone on my arm. But I love walking around school without long sleeves because people can see that it's just a battle scar. It's what I've been through. Yeah, I want people to see that. So that's one thing that I've always wanted people to see is that it's okay to show. It's okay. I want you to gain that confidence no matter how long it will take. The other thing I would say is probably just to, um, I mean, personally for me, I have these fake nails on my hands, which actually help me so much. I've started wearing them a lot more. They're just plastic nails that I put on and I file them bluntly so that my skin doesn't tear nearly as bad. Like it, it really does a lot. And I've seen a lot of other people do it. And I was like, how did I not know this before? But if you are a youth and you're struggling with really, um, really bad tears in your skin, um, blunting your nails can help a lot because sometimes our natural nails just, they don't do the trick. So that was a struggle for me for a long time. But yeah, basically just what I said and having a lot of confidence. And if it takes you a while to gain up that confidence, that's okay. Just keep trying. Thank you, Natalia. I really appreciate that. And uh, I have to say, and I think uh, everyone else here is, is just thinking how brave you are and you're very uh, motivational and uh, I really appreciate you joining us. Uh, we have another question from the audience. Um, in addition to access to treatments, 
what are the challenges that people with uh, atopic eczema face in having access to the right specialists for an accurate diagnosis? Um, maybe I'll go to Cheryl if you want to talk a little bit about the, the difficulty in reaching the right diagnosis and uh, maybe the barriers along the process of, from beginning to, to treatment. Thanks very much, Stephanie. Look, there's no easy solution to this. Worldwide, the health systems differ so much that um, gaining access to a specialist, even getting a, um, a referral in some countries from your GP can be really problematic. And then you have a great long waiting list uh, to see a dermatologist. In some countries, it can be, you know, up to a year. I know in Australia, it's a you know, in New Zealand, it's probably about um, two to three months, which doesn't help when you're going through a really severe flare. Uh, we always advise seeing a dermatologist is the best way to proceed, but that can be really problematic and expensive. And this is one of the problems with eczema. Everything that, um, you know, you have to do is expensive. Like Rachel said, all your ointments and creams that you need to use on a daily basis uh, they're over-the-counter products, they're not subsidised. And now a lot of the treatments in some countries aren't subsidised either. So it is honestly one of the most expensive skin diseases to treat with very little help from most countries. But that is starting to change. It is slow, but we really need some guidelines. We need a clearer path to, to um, start right from the get-go, from diagnosis to a, to a clear treatment path, and then another plan for accessibility to the treatments that are required. If we can put those into place on a global scale to be adapted country by country, I think that would make it a lot easier, even for our health professionals, they get confused too, unfortunately. You go from one um, health provider to another and they all treat it differently and all have a different view. So we need to take some of the confusion out to make it a lot clearer and easier for everyone to understand. Plus, I really think providing the means for patients to work more closely with the health provider team makes a big difference to the outcomes for their treatment and their management. Mm -hmm. So um, this is a lot of the stuff that Global Skin's working on. And also, um, you know, the, the grid project will be very exciting so we can approach governments with some really clear and concise um, data, which can really help to gain funding to get these things implemented. I hope that answers your question. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Cheryl. Um, and Rachel, uh, as, the, as the founder of the Eczema Society of Kenya, maybe, maybe you can let us know a little bit about how it works in Kenya from the beginning point of someone first realizing that maybe they have a problem to actually trying to access some care? Yeah, um, what I can say, the challenges are many because um, they miss, they, it starts sometimes with misdiagnosis. Then, um, of course, you have to go to a GP, probably there's misdiagnosis or you're diagnosed correctly, but uh, obviously they'll send you to a, a dermatologist. So the, if the, the gap between from GP to a dermatologist, that transition is one of the most challenging transitions because even for the GP to, to, to let you, uh, to like transfer you to go see a dermatologist and then getting to see the dermatologist itself, the challenge of accessing one, Affording to aff affordability, it's very expensive. Then getting to see the, you know, the, the, the queue, by the time you get to see one, the, the, the long queue, of course. And then even not all uh, facilities have dermatologists, only special facilities. So people have to travel from one area to another, probably. Some people may have to, to take a bus or a train or something like that. It's quite a distance. You, 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 you will need transport. You will, you know, and just even appreciating the fact that the GP told me to go and see a, a dermatologist. You know, we, we, we are not very friendly with being transferred from one doctor to another. So by the time you accept that, okay, fine, this doctor asked me to go and see this one. 
then you know there's that kind of there's that um but one thing I can tell you, it's very expensive to just afford a dermatologist here because a dermatologist will cost you a normal, in a normal facility, will cost you about, uh, say, $2,500 to $3,500 if I, if I speak in terms of USD. So you can see how that is expensive. And then, um, of course, there's a lot, skin diseases are just misdiagnosed. Every skin disease, will, you'll be told, first of all, you'll be told, oh, it's, a, you know, all of them say it's eczema, even if it's not eczema. So sometimes it's probably psoriasis or another thing. And sometimes they don't even know what it is. So the challenges that come with it, and then the tests, the number of tests that you take before you're diagnosed with whichever skin disease you have in terms of, you know, they're, they're trying to rule out whatever it could be. So they will try, they will start with, oh, probably it's HIV probably it's some STD, probably, you know, hepatitis or something. My God, it takes you a lot of courage and you need a lot of support. So that's why even through our, my organization, uh, when people come to the, organ the organization and through the platform, the social media platform also, and also we have a, a call center and the WhatsApp group, um, it's easier for people to, to relate but by the time they come here, they have really gone through a lot. So someone will say, whoa, look for this group, look for this platform, look for this office. You're going to get help from there. But by the, I can honestly tell you, by the time you get here, you have really, really, really suffered. So we try so, as much as possible to, to, to help people also know about our platform because it makes the burden a bit easier. It's, it's, you know, you are able to relate, you know where to go. Because I remember when my baby was small, and this was my first time baby. I didn't, and then we didn't have this platform completely in Kenya. We didn't. There was, pro, there was totally no information. Even if you went to Google or wherever, there was no information completely. So I remember just struggling. You know, we are, we are queuing at the pediatrician's uh, uh, clinic. We are queuing that to take the baby to the clinic. And then uh, we, we, then we just realized like four to five of us, our children look the same, you know, you know, they are the bunch here, yeah, the bunch here, yeah, yeah. you know, there's a way eczema looks. So all of us have the same condition. And then we are always, so we are sent at some point, the ped sent us to a dermatologist. And then now probably, uh, and then of course the medication is also more like guesswork. I don't think there's any dermatologist who said, this is the specific medication that will work for this one because everyone has their own challenges in terms of what they're eating, external conditions, whichever conditions. Eh? So um, you, you, you get, you, at some point you get tired because you're going to the same person over and over again. It's expensive already. It's, it looks like guesswork already because probably something is not, especially those who are asthmatic and they have eczema at the same time. That is one very big challenge again. So um, I remember we moved like, in one year, when my son was six months old, six, six weeks, sorry, six weeks old, within one year, we had seen, I think, 15 dermatologists. All over Kenya, from Nairobi to Busia, to Kakamega, to the Western part, to the, where every, any dermatologist you can think about, because we were frustrated. You're going here, you're told this, try this, try this. Most of it is too much steroid. Most of it is, you know, this one is rubbishing, this one, this one is rubbishing, this one. So it is quite a challenge. It needs, it requires a lot of courage, resilience. And uh, I mean, you just have to be ready for the fight because it's actually a fight. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Rachel. And actually we did just have a comment, uh, not a question from one of our audience members who said that, uh, there's one statement in the, in the film that was really won't leave them. And it was re saying, I'm tired of, of having to be strong. And I think you really uh, demonstrated, Rachel, why such strength is needed to, to keep moving forward with this burden. Um, so thank you for explaining that. We have time for just one last quick question. Um, Natalia, someone from the, the audience asked, if you think that uh, films such as this are a good way to motivate other patients uh, to come forward with their stories. Um, yes, I do think so. This film shows a lot of what we've been going through, even like no matter what age you are, everybody's suffering. So it's been able to show a lot of that. And it honestly, just like the way it's portrayed and the music, it all comes together 
to really hit the heart. You know, when you watch it, it's just like you felt that. You felt, you kind of just felt a little bit of heartache. And that's kind of what we're trying to get at to kind of show you that it does hurt physically and mentally. So that does, it does suck. But um, I do think that the film has really portrayed that and showing that, you know, we are going through stuff, but we're also trying to still live on our lives. And uh, I do think you should come forward and be open about what you're going through. Thank you, Natalia. I really appreciate it. Um, we're nearing the end of our, of our time together. So I wanna thank all of our panelists again, uh, Rachel, Natalia, Cheryl, Andy and Paul, thank you all for your insights today uh, and for all your hard work on this film. Um, I think we're all very hopeful that this will have a great impact uh, going forward. So thank you all. Um, I'm gonna pass things over to back to Jennifer Austin for some final thoughts. Thank you. Uh, I just want to start by making some observations about what we've heard from our panelists today. Uh, our organization obviously does a lot of work around atopic eczema. Um, I, I think this process has been an education though for all of us to get these personal accounts from these patients. Um, I think we've all really learned a lot from them. And one of the things that I really have taken away from this is just the shared impacts uh, of people living with atopic eczema, but also of people living with skin diseases in general. And that includes that psychosocial impact, which is so huge, the stigma that people are living with, the fact that these diseases are so debilitating and often lifelong. And uh, one of the panelists said also the heartache, I think it was you, Natalia, um, the heartache of living with a disease that uh, you know that you're constantly battling and trying to manage. And uh, you know there, there may or may not be help out there for you and you're working to try to find that help. And you know, these common challenges across all dermatological diseases come from the fact that they're not prioritized in healthcare systems. And yet skin conditions, and we've heard from Stephanie how common atopic eczema is in particular, they're so prevalent. There's so many people around the world that are suffering from these conditions. And we unfortunately see, however, that general practitioners are not equipped with the training to diagnose and treat to the degree that they need to be. When they're seeing people in their offices, often it is a skin condition. It is one of the most common reasons that people go to see their doctor. And that's then creating a long diagnosis journey, which is very painful. Uh, that lack of specialist care, and that comes back to the fact that there's not enough research on these diseases, and there's not enough money put into medical schools for seats for dermatologist training. We need more specialists so that people have better access. And um, you know, there is a lack of, of uh, good affordable treatments out there. And I guess the, the, the great takeaway about atopic eczema is that there are amazing opportunities. There, we're seeing new treatments for the first time in decades that are really making meaningful changes in the lives of patients. And that's, a, that's so exciting. However, the frustration that patients feel in knowing that that exists and yet not having access because it's not affordable. Um, I think that we have to keep fighting, like Rachel said. And uh, so we need to remember there's hope, but there's a lot of hard work ahead of us. And, um, you know, I think it's inspiring for patients living with dermatological conditions to see what's happened in the atopic eczema community, because I think in many ways you're leading the way because there are there is hope. Um, you know, we hope that there will be more new treatments coming um, available for patients with other skin diseases as well, that there will be the type of innovation that we're seeing with atopic eczema. And I just want to also talk about very quickly the fact that these human stories really are as pointed out earlier by the panel, qualitative data. And when and, it, and that's so important. We obviously need the hard numbers, but this qualitative data of a lived experience is so important for people to understand the true impact and burden of living with a skin condition like atopic eczema. And when we previewed this documentary in the spring with the World Health Organization in attendance at an event in Geneva, they did refer to it as qualitative data, which was very validating. So, Together, when we tell our stories, there's strength in our numbers. 
So I wanna conclude by expressing great appreciation to Stephanie, who um, has uh, done a great job here today, but all of the team at Global Skin who have worked on this documentary. Also to our panelists, Cheryl, Paul, Rachel, Natalia, and Andy. Andy, thank you so much for everything you've done to make this happen. And special thank you to Abvi and principals for all of uh, their support. And my uh, extreme uh, and sincere admiration to the brave participants in this documentary, Phoebe, Reese, Natalia, Rachel, and Arsene, uh, Hamina, and Martina. I think together we've created something really unique and beautiful and impactful. And as a community, we should all be proud of the work that we've done. And this is a really important piece in the advocacy work going forward. So now I'm asking for your help all of you in the audience and to spread the word that we need to share this film widely and capture the attention of the decision makers uh, who are out there that can provide better access to this to the treatments that are available and to ensure that there's better access to care. And um, I ask that you go and look at the documentary and share it around. You can find it at globalskin.org slash atopic eczema. So thank you everybody for being here today. We're grateful for your interest and your support.